bless all of you for being here tonight. I'm as prepared as ever. Praise the Lord. And just being the ex-Boy Scout that I am. Oh, yeah. Praise the Lord. I had to go get a microphone. Just in case. Praise God. Amen. Thank you, Mike. Thanks, worship team. You all did great, as always. Praise the Lord. God is on the move. Hallelujah. Amen. We want to <clears throat> just take any prayer requests you may have this, this evening. Uh, 
I know for sure I'd like you to be praying for Tammy, Dan, and, and their family. Uh, God's been doing some great things there, but the enemy obviously is trying to throw a curveball into the situation, which he always does. The moment God begins to bless and move, he tries to get you into <clears throat> unbelief and fear and all that stuff. But God is greater, amen, amen. and uh, we just declare the victory, amen, in every area and in that entire situation. God's going to restore and they're going to come out better, amen, on the other side than they were going in. Hallelujah. That's just the way God works. He makes all things new. Praise the Lord. So, amen. Anybody else have a prayer request tonight? Tim. Absolutely. Amen. Praise the Lord. We'll be in agreement with you there that God will use you and and that your sister will experience and all the family the peace of God and fellowship of family and you know God's all about family. Praise the Lord. He started the first one and he's been working it out ever since. Praise the Lord. So anybody else? James. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise God. We'll pray for that entire situation. Just believe that God's working through all of that and it's going to give you some privacy and peace and an opportunity to do your thing for a while. Amen. Yes, Mike. Amen. We'll remember the youth. Praise the Lord. Roberto, did you have your hand up?
Praise the Lord, yeah. Amen. Praise God. Yes, amen. Anybody else? All right, let's stand and go to the Lord in prayer right now. You've heard all these requests. God knew them before we got here. Amen. But let's just trust him. Amen. In fact, let's just declare that this is the reality. Because every prayer request I've heard, we know is the will of God. And the scripture says that if we know that it's his will, then we know that he hears us. And if he hears us, we have our petition. Amen. So as we pray, the scripture talks about believe as you pray. Amen. And we receive it right now. This moment, the moment we're praying, we're saying God is doing it. Amen. In Jesus' name. So, Father, we just thank you for the privilege to join together in prayer and to come boldly to the throne of grace, declaring, Lord, that your will will be done in each and every one of these situations, that you'll be shown mighty, hallelujah. The enemy will be defeated, hallelujah, and scattered seven ways, Lord. As we come before you this evening, Lord, we declare the victory, hallelujah. Lord, we just feel the power of the Holy Spirit rising up in us right now, Lord, because we know, Lord, that we are in your perfect will. You are the healer, Lord. You are the deliverer. You are the prince of peace, hallelujah, the Lord and Savior of all of us, hallelujah. And we put our confidence in you tonight. And, Lord, we celebrate the victory right now in Jesus' mighty name. And we thank you, Lord, for the testimonies that will come as a result of what you're doing right this moment. In the mighty and matchless name of Jesus, we pray and give you all the praise and the glory for you alone deserve it, Lord. In Jesus' name, and everybody said, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a hand clap. Praise God. Amen, amen. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. James, could you do me a, a favor and come take up the offering tonight? Appreciate it, brother. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Sure. Hallelujah. That's where the hand clap. Praise God. Amen. Amen. All right. James, you want to pray or you want me to? Amen. Thank you, James. God bless you as you give. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. You can just lay that on my desk, James, after you finish. God bless you as you give. Thank you, James, for praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Again, I appreciate all of you being here tonight. Amen. And uh, as, it, as we try to do on Wednesday nights, be brief and still... Uh, do all that God wants us to do. Praise God. You know, everything, uh, if you read the scripture, and uh, I'll use a big word here just for the, so I can say I used it, but <laughs> eschatology. And all that really means is the death, burial, resurrection, eternity, you know, uh, everlasting relationship with God. When you look at the scripture that way, everything changes in the light of the resurrection of Christ. In other words, in, in, the, in the finished work of Jesus, you can go all the way back to Genesis, and every single story, every individual, in some way reflects something about Christ. It's either a, re a reflection of Jesus or a type of Christ, or it's a, uh, uh, an opposite or a contradiction to what Jesus stands for, uh, satanic or what have you. But everything in there, everything in here is about him. Praise the Lord. And so uh, I, I want to, I know Sunday, you know, you can get, all, you can get into this and it, it just sounds crazy. But that's because we, we think so much in natural terms that when we see it as a, uh, the spiritual reality of it, it can kind of mess with our heads. But I, I, I'm looking. At, I'm studying some stuff now for this Sunday about the temple, and it's just fascinating to me how, from the very beginning, God is has this per perfect uh, plan.
plan, but it's not just a plan. It's so, uh, so precise in every aspect of how he develops it. Because he sees the end from the beginning, you know, we see, we see this thing, you know, kind of playing out, having a history of it, and then seeing what's going on today, and then, hear, and then seeing the prophetic things that have been spoken. But for God, it's all done. So everything fits together perfectly, and uh, the more we see it that way, the greater our faith can rise, and the more God can do with us and through us. Because he really wants us to be like Christ. He really wants us to operate as Jesus in this world. And uh, so we really have to have our minds renewed beyond just the, the being good people. And I'm not, I'm not saying that we shouldn't be moral and decent and holy and, and, and good people. But I'm saying if that becomes our focus, we can miss what the real point of God. I mean, those things will happen if we are focused on Christ. Those will be the natural outgrowth of a real uh, meaningful relationship with Jesus, praise the Lord. So anyway, let's... Uh, Roberto, if you will, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take a long reading here at the beginning. I'm not going to use a whole lot of scripture tonight, but I've got a couple of places I want to read a lot of scripture uh, just to set this up. So I want to read from 1 Kings, and I want to read chapter 17. So we're going to do the whole chapter, uh, 24 verses, I believe. This is a familiar story to everybody, but I wanna sh just want to kind of show you some of the things that I'm talking about here. And this is... Uh, as we, as we go through this, you'll see, we, we all are familiar with the story, and we know it's God working a miracle. Elijah goes to this, to this woman. He's been uh, under a lot of pressure because of uh, Ahab and, and uh, Jezebel and so on and so forth, but uh, there's a, he calls down a, a, a drought, you know, a famine comes on the land because of that and so forth. So this is the, that's kind of the, the setup for this uh, particular story. And Elijah the Tishbite, who was of the inhabitants of Gilead, said to Ahab, As the Lord God of Israel liveth, before whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain these years, but according to my word. And the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Get thee hence, and turn thee eastward, and hide thyself by the brook Cherith, that is before Jordan. And it shall be that thou shalt drink of the brook, and I have commanded the ravens to feed thee there. So he went and did according to the word of the Lord, for he went and dwelt by the brook Cherith, that is before Jordan. And the ravens brought him bread and flesh in the morning, and bread and flesh in the evening, and he drank of the brook. Came to pass after a while that the brook dried up, because there had been no rain in the land. And the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Arise, get thee to Zarephath, which belongeth to Zidon, and dwell there. Behold, I have commanded a widow woman there to sustain thee. And he arose and went to Zarephath, and when he came to the gate of the city, behold, the widow woman was there gathering of sticks, and he called to her and said, Fetch me, I pray thee, a little water in a vessel that I may drink. And as she was going to fetch it, he called to her and said, Bring me, I pray thee, a morsel of bread in thine hand. And she said, As the Lord thy God liveth, I have not a cake, but a handful of meal in a barrel, and a little oil in a cruise. And behold, I am gathering two sticks, that I may go in and dress it for me and my son, that we may eat it and die. And Elijah said unto her, Fear not, go and do as thou hast said, and make me thereof a little cake first, and bring it unto me, and after make for thee and for thy son. For thus saith the Lord God of Israel, The barrel of meal shall not waste, neither shall the crucible fail, until the day that the Lord sendeth rain upon the earth. And she went and did according to the saying of Elijah, and she and he and her house did eat many days. And the barrel of meal wasted not, neither did the cruise of oil fail, according to the word of the Lord, which he spake by Elijah. And it came to pass after these things that the son of the woman, the mistress of the house, fell sick. And his sickness was so sore that there was no breath left in him. And she said unto Elijah, What have I to do with thee, O thou man of God? Art thou come to unto me to call my sin to remembrance and to slay my son? And he said unto her, Give me thy son. And he took him out of her bosom and carried him up into a loft where he abode and laid him upon his own bed. And he cried unto the Lord and said, O Lord my God, hast thou also brought evil upon the widow with whom I sojourn by slaying her son? And he stretched himself upon the child three times and cried unto the Lord and said, O Lord my God, I pray thee, let this child's soul come into him again. And the Lord heard the voice of Elijah, and the soul of the child came into him again, and he revived. 
And Elijah took the child and brought him down out of the chamber into the house and delivered him unto his mother. And Elijah said, See, thy son liveth. And the woman said to Elijah, Now by this I know that thou art a man of God, and that the word of the Lord in thy mouth is truth. Amen. Praise the Lord. So here's what I'm talking about. God's provision of food, the truth of God's word, and the gift of life. These are three concepts that are consistently connected throughout the Bible. And it shows us God's provision for his people. And you say, why? Well, there's the literal sense that God provides daily bread, amen, for his children. And, of course, you know, we have to eat to keep our bodies alive, right? But there's this other idea, this sense that God's words of truth are said to be sustenance in themselves. Well, see, you have the literal, you have the natural, and then you have the spiritual. You have the need for natural food, which God says, I'll give you your daily bread. But then we also need the word of God, which he describes as sustenance. Amen? Strength giving, life giving. Amen? So God's promise itself, and listen to me, God's promise itself is said to keep us alive. Yes. Praise the Lord. Amen. All right. Matthew chapter 4, verses 1 through 4. What I'm saying is a lot of times, and I don't want to get too far ahead of myself, but a lot of times we're looking for God to do something when it's just God that we really need. Yes. The somethings will take care of themselves. Praise the Lord. God said, I'll give you your daily bread. He said, I'll clothe you. I'll take care of you. Just like uh, I take care of the birds and the, the flowers and so on and so forth. It's me that you're really after. Now, it's God that gives us our daily bread, but it's the word of God that gives us sustenance, that actually gives us life. Praise the Lord. Because without this spirit in us, we're dead. Your spirit can live forever, but this body depends on the spirit being in it for it to live. If the spirit departs, the body's done. Praise the Lord. So then was Jesus led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. When he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterward hungry. And when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Hallelujah. So it isn't just physical bread that we have to have. But it's God's word itself, hallelujah. It's God's word that sustains us, that really gives us nourishment, amen. It's his promises that give us hope, amen. His declarations that guide us, his blessings that give us joy, amen. Look at Acts chapter 17 and verse 28. Acts 17, 28, for in him we live and move and have our being. As certain also of your own poets have said, for we are also his offspring. So all of this I'm talking about amounts to a spiritual life that can't be compartmentalized away from our, quote, real life. You understand what I'm saying? Your spirit life cannot be separated from our natural life. We call it real life, the real life that we're living. But that's not the real life. Amen. They, they are one. In fact, that's how God sees it. Amen. This, this repeated scriptural concept of provision points always to a spiritual life. One that correlates to our physical life. They're, they're connected. Amen. So oxygen, for example, oxygen, water, and food make us able to live and to move, to do what we do, right? But the Bible tells us no. It's in God that we live and move and have our being. You see what I'm saying? There's this, there's this parallel over and over, this concept of what the body needs, God is saying is exactly what your spirit needs, and that is me. Praise God. And uh, so, you know, Jesus, his, his provision doesn't improve life. It gives life. In fact, it is life. I am the way, the truth, and the life. Hallelujah. 
abundant life, not natural life that always has ups and downs and times of lack or times of, uh, of distress, but the spirit life, which is full of God, that is filled with the fullness of God, never, never lacking, amen. Just for example, when Jesus fed the 5,000, look at this, uh, Roberto, in John chapter 6. Uh, we'll begin with verse 5, but we're just going to jump around through here a little bit just to save some time. But John chapter 6 and verse 5, when Jesus then lifted up his eyes and saw a great company come unto him, he saith unto Philip, Whence shall we buy bread that these may eat? Verse 9, there's a lad here which has five barley loaves and two small fishes, but what are they among so many? Verse 11 through 13. And Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed to the disciples and the disciples to them that were set down, and likewise of the fishes as much as they would. When they were filled, he said unto his disciples, Now gather up the fragments that remain, that nothing be lost. Therefore they gathered them together and filled twelve baskets with the fragments of the five barley loaves, which remained over and above unto them that had eaten. They, ate, they fed five thousand with this couple of fish and some little uh, loaves of bread, and they end up with 12 baskets full of leftovers. I'm thinking we need to do this the next picnic. I mean, this is, <laughs> praise the Lord. Amen. All right. Now look at uh, verse 25 through 35. Same chapter, verse 25 through 35. And when they had found him on the other side of the sea. So here's a, here's a natural feeding. It's not natural, it's supernatural, but it was feeding the body, right? He was feeding their natural man, right? So when they had found him on the other side of the sea, they said unto him, and this is just ignoring the fact that he just walked on the water, or he transported himself from one side to the other side without a boat, however he did it, amen. But nevertheless, they said unto him, Rabbi, when camest thou hither? Jesus answered them and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, you seek me not because you saw the miracles, but because you ate of the loaves and were filled because he had a big meal labor not for the meat which perisheth now we're not talking about beef or chicken he's talking about food he's just using that as the metaphor or the the example okay so labor not for the food which perisheth but for that food which endureth unto everlasting life which the son of man shall give unto you for him hath God the father sealed then said they unto him what shall we do that we might work the works of God Jesus answered and said unto them, This is the work of God, that you believe on him whom he has sent. They said therefore unto him, What sign showest thou then that we may see and believe thee? What dost thou work? Our fathers did eat manna in the desert, as it is written. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Moses gave you not that bread from heaven, but my Father giveth you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he which cometh down from heaven and giveth life unto the world. Then said they unto him, Lord, evermore give us this bread. And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. Praise the Lord. All right, verse 41. And the Jews then murmured at him because he said, I am bread which came down from heaven. Verse 43. Jesus therefore answered and said unto them, Murmur not among yourselves. I, get, I, I see you. I hear you. Amen. And now verse 48 through 52. I am that bread of life. Your fathers did eat manna in the wilderness, and they're dead. This is the bread which cometh down from heaven, that a man may eat thereof and not die. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I give, that I will give, is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. The Jews therefore strove among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Praise the Lord. So basically, Jesus is saying, You're looking for signs and wonders, which I'm happy to give. But you're missing the point. The point is, not signs and wonders, but what the signs and wonders point to. Yes. Praise the Lord. It wasn't just about feeding some people's flesh. He had a deeper, much deeper uh, statement that he was trying to make. 
Now, he wanted to feed them. He didn't mind doing the miracle. That, that wasn't the deal. It's that he was trying to show them something more powerful and something more uh, deeply uh, rooted in the reality of who he was and why he was there. They just like the fact they got a free meal. Praise the Lord. So the, the manna in the desert wasn't about Moses or it wasn't about having a great story to tell. It was about God to point you to God. Praise the Lord. How many of you know they didn't get that very well either? So to make you rely on God. It was God pointing you to God so that you would learn to trust God. In order for you to connect the provision of life itself to God himself. Amen? Amen? He is our sustenance. He's our provider. He's our God. He's, he's everything. Yes, he is life itself. Jesus said, you know the manna your ancestors needed to live? Yeah. That was me. Yep. Yeah. That's what he's telling them. I am the bread you need to live. I am your daily bread. Yeah. Yeah. Praise God. Yeah. Every day. And they're going, excuse me, what? He, these, these people are dumbfounded, and they're like, what did he say? We have to consume him to live? We have to have him in us to live. Christ in you. Praise the Lord. So... The key to Christianity isn't rules or regulations or Bible knowledge or, or listening to preaching tapes or, or doing good deeds. And Again, all those are good things, and we should do them all. But that's not Christianity. Christianity is being in Christ. And that's everything he's trying to set these people up for because they've been living in a, in a type and shadow of the reality that God wanted them to understand, but they never figured it out. They really made it about the types and the shadows. They made it about the manna that came down from heaven without ever knowing what that manna was, right. who it was, what the point of it was. Was it just to, to keep us from wasting away? Or was it to show us that God's got your back, God's got your front, God's got your head, God's got your feet, God's got all of you. Uh -huh. He's going to take care of you. Yes, all right, look at John chapter 15. Verses 4 and 5. He said, I'm the vine, you're the branches. Abide in me, I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abideth in the vine. No more can you, except you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. Amen? So here Jesus is fusing his living in us with our living in him. It's a connection, praise the Lord. And, and I mean, sometimes in the natural, you think about, are we in him? Is he in us? What's the deal here? Yeah, it's both. We're in Christ, and Christ is in us. We were in Christ before the foundation of the world. Amen. We receive Christ, and he comes and dwells in us, and now it's Christ in us, the hope of glory. We have an a, 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 a intermingling or a fusing of our realities, of our identities, of our truth of our reality as, as uh, spirit beings, praise the Lord. So here's the thing we've got to worry. We, we've got to be careful not to make the mistake of, of this Jesus symbolic offering of bread and water with what's going on here with that of a widow, her handful of flour, and some boy's lunch. Because that's what happens. That's, that's where we get it all confused. Amen. The only meal that gives life is Christ. That's the point of all of these stories about him feeding the poor, feeding this and doing that, and, 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 and all the way back through the Old Testament. That's what's so significant about this story of the widow, amen, of Seraphath, is that it shows you the exact way God is doing this. Yeah. It gives you the, the three ways that he works, amen, in our lives. Yeah. He's the bread of life. He is living water. Yeah. Amen. Amen. He alone is an abundant feast. Yeah. 
He's all you need, praise the Lord, for life. Yeah. Hallelujah. Romans chapter 5 and verse 17. For if by one man's offense death reigned by one, much more they which receive abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness shall reign in life. Not just live, but rule in life by one Jesus Christ. Abundance of grace. Eat that. <laughs> Digest that. Because it's life. Amen. It's real life. It's true life. It's eternal life. Mark chapter 7, look at this, uh, Mark 7, 26 through 29. Mark 7, 26 through 29. Show you something, there's a little subtle things that, that are in the scriptures that sometimes we just miss unless we have a focus on a particular thing that God's trying to show. So the woman was a Greek. We, we all know these stories. She was a Greek, a Syrophoenician by nation, and she besought him that he would cast forth the devil out of her daughter. But Jesus said unto her, let the children first be filled. She's a Greek. She's not a Jew. And Jesus came to the Jews first, right? right. And so cat, forth cast the devil out of her. But Jesus said unto her, let the children first be filled. It's not me to take the children's bread. What's he talking about? Him. Right. He's not talking about giving them some bread, leavened or unleavened. He's talking about me. It's not right for me to take, what, take me from them and give it to somebody else because I'm here for them. But Jesus said, let the children first be filled. It's not me to take the children's bread and to cast it under dogs. That's what Gentiles were considered. Right. Amen? Dogs. And she answered and said unto him, yes, Lord, but the dogs, and that word actually translates puppies, yet the puppies under the table eat of the children's crumbs. Yeah. She said, if we just get close enough to you, we could get the benefit of the bread of life. Yeah. Even though it really wasn't meant for us, we can get, we, just the crumbs are enough to give us life, to, to give us all that we have need of. And here's what Jesus said. He said unto her, for this saying, go thy way, the devil has gone out of their daughter. She got something, she understood something, she got a revelation that the Jews didn't get, that his own disciples didn't understand. She saw him, you are the bread of life. You are my sustenance. You are my deliverer, my healer. You are my strength. You are my life. And Jesus said, because of this, because you've seen this, the devil's gone out of your daughter. Praise the Lord. She recognized Jesus as the bread. All right, look at this now. Mark chapter 8, verses 17 through 21. Mark 8, 17 to 21. When Jesus knew it, he saith unto them, Why reason ye because you have no bread? Perceive ye not yet, neither understand. Have ye your hearts yet hardened? He's, this he's trying to explain to his disciples. They had seen him feed the, the 5,000. They're still thinking this is about manna. They're thinking this is still about bread that you can stick in your mouth. And he said, Why reason you because you have no bread? Perceive ye not yet, neither understand, have ye your hearts yet hardened? Having eyes to see, or having eyes, see ye not. Here's your bread, you're looking right at it. And having ears ye hear not, do ye not remember? When I break the five loaves among the five thousand, how many baskets full of fragments took ye up? They said unto him, twelve. And, when, and th when the seven among four thousand, how many baskets full of fragments took you up? And they said seven. And he said unto them, how is it that you do not understand? He said, you people are blowing my mind. How can you not understand it's about me? Right. Feeding people is feeding them bread, just getting food to them. It's not the issue. It's not a big deal. It's nothing. Right. It's no different than, again, by, just repeat myself, but it's no different than him saying, look at the, look at the bird. Do they freak out about where their next meal's coming from? No, my father feeds them. They got plenty. What about the, the flowers? They don't toil. They don't spin. They're not worried about where they're going to get their cloth for their clothes. No, my father clothes them. What are you worried about these things for? What you need is me. Praise the Lord. I sustain life. 
Praise the Lord. All right, John chapter 6, again, verse 48 through 51. This last scripture, and we'll wrap up. John 6, 48 through 51. So we can spend so much time, like the disciples, freaking and fretting and stressing over a particular thing that we have need of, that we think is so, got to, got to have it. I got to get it. It's got to happen. When if we would focus on him, it happens automatically. It just comes as a result of that. I'm not saying we shouldn't pray about issues and so forth, but I'm saying he is the answer to everything. Praise the Lord. He has it all in us, for us. He is the bread of life. Your fathers ate manna in the wilderness. They're dead. The stuff you're wanting, it'll go away. It'll rot. It'll, it'll decay. It'll, it'll go off. I'm not against you having it. That's not what he's saying. He's just saying your, your, your focus is on something far less significant. This is the bread which comes down from heaven that a man eat thereof and not die. Amen. It sustains for eternity. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. Praise the Lord. It's like the, the widow woman and her son. God not only provides for our daily living, but he provides the life that we daily live. Praise the Lord. And we do that through his word, Jesus Christ. Amen. We, 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 have to sometimes, we just have to reset every once in a while and remind ourselves that this is about seeking first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all the things are added. Praise the Lord. When the next time the enemy comes and starts blowing up the problem, amen, making the issue the focus, you need to just narrow it right back down to Jesus, block out everything else, and I promise you, God will provide your daily need, amen, while giving you eternal life. Hallelujah. Amen. Give the Lord a hand clap tonight. Praise God. Amen, amen. It makes it so much simpler. Faith becomes a much less uh, huge obstacle to overcome. I mean, like really, really get our faith up. If you just focus on Jesus, amen. keep your faith in him, your confidence in him, your faith in everything else is magnified as a result of it. Amen. God bless all of you. Appreciate you being here tonight. Amen. Go in the power of his might. And in the faith of Jesus Christ. Amen. It's all good in him. Praise the Lord. Amen. God bless you. You're dismissed in Jesus' name. Hope we'll see you back here Sunday. Tim and Leah have a great time with family. And enjoy the presence of the Lord with them. Amen. God bless you. You're all dismissed.